Direct substitution is a method used by process control engineers when we want to determine the maximum controller gain we can use when our process has uh, delays. And so what I'm going to do in this video is go over how we can take a process that has um, this exponential term here, which indicates that we have a time delay of approximately one second, if those are the time scales we're working with, um, and be able to determine if we added in a proportional only feedback controller GC into our loop, what is the maximum uh, gain? How aggressive can this controller be before our system begin, um, becomes unstable? And so we're going to start out by uh, looking at the characteristic equation. And um, based on our closed loop transfer function here, we know that our uh, characteristic equation will have the form one plus product of all transfer functions, which in this case will be GC GP, which is equal to one plus KC times two exponential minus S quantity divided by three S plus one. And so now if we uh, combine these two terms, uh, what we would have is 3s plus 1 plus 2kc exponential minus s quantity divided by 3s plus 1. And so um, because we are interested in stability, we are interested in the denominator of our overall transfer function. And because we're looking at the denominator, because our characteristic equation is in the denominator, uh, the numerator of this term we wrote here is the thing that we're interested in. So we're going to set this equal to zero, and what we're going to look at is when we have 3s plus 1 plus 2kc times exponential minus s is equal to zero. So this is what we're interested in. And so what we do in direct synthesis is we're going to let uh, s equal j omega where j is the square root of minus one. And um, this is because if we go back to the real and imaginary um, plane, our system is on the verge of instability when our poles exist on the imaginary axis itself. And this is when s equals j omega. And so if we plug directly in, if we directly substitute s equals j omega, into this equation, what we'll find is that we end up getting the following. So we'll have three times j omega plus one plus two kc exponential minus j omega. And um, if we recall Euler's uh, formula, uh, this term here is equivalent to cosine omega minus j sine omega. And uh, continuing, what we would find is that if we look at only the real parts of this equation here, we would get 2kc cosine omega. And if we look at the imaginary part, so everything with a j in front of it, we would get 3 omega plus or rather minus 2kc sine omega, and we would also have a plus one in our real term. And so these are the components of a complex number. And uh, so to equal zero, both the real and imaginary part must equal zero simultaneously. Um, and so what that tells us is that we now have two equations with two unknowns. Our two unknowns in this case are kc and omega. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, two kc cosine omega plus one, sorry, is equal to zero. This will tell us that kc is equal to minus one over two cosine omega. 
And if we look at the imaginary part, um, because we just evaluated what KC is, we plug this in, um, we would know that three omega minus two, now we plug in what we just found, minus one over two, and then cosine omega, and we have sine omega here, must equal zero, we'll recognize that this is equal to tangent omega, and so this uh, equation simplifies into three omega mm, plus tan omega must equal zero. And uh, this is one equation with one unknown. Um, you can type this in Wolfram Alpha or perform the trig uh, necessary to evaluate. But what we end up finding is that omega will equal 1.76, and this is radians. And because we know what uh, our Kc is as a function of omega, we also have Kc, which in this case would be equal to 2.66. And so what this value tells us is that the maximum gain of the controller, and this is a P only, we can have in our system before it becomes unstable. And so the main reason, uh, the main thing to take away from this uh, derivation is the fact that unlike the other kinds of uh, times when we use Ruth array um, to determine the stability limits, the, the take home point here is that there was no need to approximate the exponential term. And this is what makes direct synthesis um, so appealing to us because we don't have to worry about um, being inaccurate or imprecise in our um, in our statements when we tell someone if you want to have a stable system as long as we keep kc below a particular value you don't need to worry and so um, this wraps up why direct synthesis is so useful as well as a, a walkthrough um, i hope you guys find it useful let me know if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching